On this episode, Christian will blow your mind. I'm about to blow your mind. Is it his drawing skills? There's an explosion, right? Or is it his singing? I wanna see what wrong feels like. No, it's explosions. Ooh. Hi everybody, I'm Christian, this is LazyDiffs Academy. This is the advanced shmup tutorial and we've been spending a lot of episodes on the explosions. We've been spending a lot of tokens and effort into explosions, but have you seen our explosions? Have you seen the explosions? Those aren't bad explosions, I tell you that. Uh, something, something I wanted to, we didn't do last time around. Um, look at how many frames we have for the explosions. That's a long explosion, that's like 90 frames or something like this, you know, 70 or something like this. Let's see what was, what did you have for, for Dodonpachi? Yeah, 75, 75 frames for the Dodonpachi explosion. We are in that ballpark. We definitely created that kind of timing, recreated that time of timing. I'm happy about that. Uh, today we're gonna add uh, this part here that I already, that was part of the doggy zone, these kind of sparks. And I have to be honest here a little bit. We cannot create those sparks. Uh, these are too many sparks. <laughs> I like my gut feeling is that there are just too many sparks. Um, I want to keep the budget on each explosion, kind of like you know, we could recreate this, but we then we would all only maybe have like three explosions at the same time on the screen. And I want to have like have the budget to have the explosions and other stuff happening as well. And because like the way we would draw these sparks, the way we draw these sparks is by doing line statements. And it's just not a single line. We would have multiple line statements for each spark. And it's like, if you count the sparks, it's just like so many, like, look at this, look at this, you know, how many line statements you would need to draw all that stuff. Probably not in the cars to recreate this look specifically, but we still want to add some sparks to add kind of like this. Mm, the spark something that is kind of missing with our explosion right now. If you look at this, um, we have the fireball, mm, but that initial blast, that initial blast doesn't seem as forceful, as powerful yet. And I think having more uh, stuff that's moving fast, not just like the initial flash, but other things that are just moving fast out of the explosion, I think that will help to make the explosion seem more uh, forceful. So that's something I want to focus on first today, doing the sparks. And then when we have some time left, uh, we're gonna do some, um, we're gonna add some variation to the explosion. We're gonna mix things up a little bit. We're gonna make things a little bit more nicer, uh, doing some randomization so it doesn't look as, you know, the, the explosions look kind of identical right now and we want to add some variation. But first sparks. Here's the thing. We have, look at this. This is the code for our particle animation. It's 257 tokens just for the, just to animate the particle. That's a lot of code. And we don't want to redo all this stuff for every particle out there, right? Like it would be nice if we could just reuse the stuff. And a lot of stuff is kind of universal, like waiting, that's totally universal. That's the same whether it's a blob or a spark. Um, color, okay, maybe that's something that's specific, but you know, it's, it's nice to have a color, it's okay. Um, age is totally something that's valid for every every particle. Movement, we added, a, actually the last time in the last episode, we added different types of movement and we have also different types of size change. Maybe the size is not important, but the movement is totally something that uh, we can use those tools to move different particles around. And then, yeah, these things are also maybe useful. I don't know. I don't know what this is. Let's remove this. So um, I want to reuse the system on different particles. Basically, this whole um, this whole parts array. This will include um, lots of particle objects, and those particle objects will be rendered to the screen differently. They will animate the same way. We're just gonna run them all through the the same update function. But when it comes down to drawing them on the screen, they will look differently. Some of them will look like blobs, and some of them will look like 
like uh, sparks, and some of them will look like something else maybe later on. Okay, um, so how are we going to do this? We could do something like, and that wouldn't be a bad idea, do something like, you know, type. equals blob, right? Maybe it's not type because type is already reserved for it, but let's say like, like kind, <laughs> the kind of a particle it is. It is a blob. And then it would be that another particle would have the kind spark. Uh, that's totally valid. And that's something we totally can do, but we can do a little bit better, I think. And that is, I don't know if we'd already did this before. I mean, we might not have done this before in a basic tutorial, but I'm gonna blow your mind. I'm about to blow your mind. Variables can contain functions. Oh yeah. Variables can contain functions. So you can put a function inside a variable. And again, it's the same thing where like with objects, it's not exactly like, it's not like the content of the function is somehow saved in a variable. It's just a reference. The variable then contains a reference to a function. So for example, for example, uh, let's just create a little function. Uh, by the way, we have to remove this kind thing for a second, just so there's no problem. Um, let's go like the function and let's call this hello and it, it just prints hello, okay? Prints it in the center of the screen with a red color. So it's really clear. Um, let's put it in the draw function, hello. Okay, it prints the hello, okay? But we can also say something like, uh, my variable equals hello my var that's a variable right and we say equals hello now we don't say equals hello open close par uh, parentheses is this parentheses uh, yeah it's parentheses right or is it brackets let's just say brackets um so we are not putting the brackets behind us because if we did that that would actually execute the function and put the return value into the my var no, we leave out these things and we just you just take the name of the variable, uh, the, the function. We just take the name of the function and we assign this to a variable. And now something we can do, if you run this again, nothing happens. My var open close brackets, run, and it will actually run hello. It will actually run hello because we stored a reference to the function hello in the, in the my var variable so we can treat that variable as if it was kind of like a like a like a function and actually like in real like if if you if you really want to be like go deep down the rabbit hole actually what we're doing here is doing the same thing this hello thing was a variable in the first place and underscore draw is a variable in the first place and underscore in it is actually a variable. But let's just, let's just not make it too complicated. We can save functions and variables. I think that's, that's something that, that's a good takeaway here. Now, if we can save them in variables, that also means we can save functions in um, properties of objects, in, in those parameters of the object. So for example, we could save, we could have a draw property and that just tells, just stores um, a function that will draw this particle. And so we don't have to store a type and then do like an if statement and check with type and then you know do different draw functions depending on the type. We can just store the function that will draw this particle. Um, so we can just say blob. And that's it. Draw equals blob. And that will that will make the particle remember what kind of draw function is responsible for it. We have to do it every time we create a blob, but otherwise it's fine. It's fine. Now, um, when we are drawing the particles, something we're gonna do is now here in the draw function, instead of drawing the blob, this kind of like hard codes every particle is a blob. 
but something we can do now is gonna, gonna go p dot draw p because this will invoke this draw property right this will invo invoke this draw property and that draw property stores the function that is responsible for drawing or stores a reference to a function that is responsible for drawing so p dot draw will be the same as saying blob and then you know giving the parameter the the particle as a parameter let's see if that works totally works it's a no problem no problem at all what, what even is the, the deal? So this allows us now, obviously, to create different types of particles. So for example, let's instead of the blob, let's just make a particle that's called, um, a function that's called spark. No problem. So first, we're just gonna, we're just gonna make a p set. We're not going to think about too much. Um, just a red, red piece. We're just going to draw red dots for now, just to see if this even works. And then let's do here something like we're going to add a particle here. Now this time draw is not blot but spark. Uh, the position is good. Uh, we don't need the colors anymore. In fact, we don't need any colors at all. Max H, we're gonna do a really big max H just so we can see the particle. We don't need the radius even. I wonder if that will cause some problems. No, no problems. Oh, the, oh mm -hmm. what is the problem? Max H, oh yeah, yeah. there is no PR. Uh, no problem at all. Let's do something like here. Uh, PR equals PR or zero. Ah, one. There it is. That's our spark. Okay, obviously uh, it's not a great spark. We, we need to think about how we're going to draw sparks. Um, let's just let's just assume uh, we're going to move them very fast. We're just going to spawn particles and move them away from the explosion. We could just draw them as a line. So let's just draw them uh, p dot x, p dot y. And then let's assume we are not using the 2x and 2y, but we instead using the s, speed x and speed y uh, properties to animate them. Uh, we just did them on the last episode, and that's why we added one of the reasons why we added them also for the upwards drift. Uh, but you can see here, we had a 2x and 2y. That was the, initially how we did it, where you have a target position where the particles animated to. But we added the second way of animating them, where it's like we're setting a speed for the particle and it just flies away. And that's something I want to add here. So um, I, I'm gonna use this. Um, so I want to draw the particle as long as its speed. So we're going to go p, uh, px minus p dot sy. And I, I'm saying minus, um, minus sx, uh, because I want uh, the particle basically to leave a trail behind. So it moves and there's going to be a trail behind the particle. Uh, something like this. Right, so just like to split it apart. Mm -hmm. So x, oh, I don't know if that's even better readable. So the, um, the, the line is going to be drawn from x and y, that's the x and y position of the particle, to x and y, x minus the speed x and y minus speed y. So basically it's, it's, it's moving, drawing a line between where the particle is and was last turn, let, um, last frame. That's, that's a different way of phrasing this. Um, yeah, let's bring it back together in one line. I think. I don't think. I don't think br uh, splitting it into two lines makes it any more clear. Uh, uh, just make it red for now because it's very, very, very readable. Um, now let us spawn the particles. The, the uh, let's spawn our 
our um, Spark particle in a slightly smarter way. Let's just go SX3, SY3. Let us give it a maximum age of like 30, I don't know. Let's try that. That's good, that's good. Now we want to have more of them and I think doing this manually is gonna be a bit, uh, gonna be not good. So let us just create uh, a similar function that we had with a grape function. Simpler, simpler a little bit than this because this has a lot of parameters. Um, but a kind of like a type of a function that is similar to the grape function where uh, those sparks are being generated, you know, in, in like a blast of sparks. Um, so let's just scroll past the grape function. We're gonna go function spark blast. <laughs> Why not? Um, I'm gonna go E X E Y, um, and I'm gonna go E weight. I'm gonna immediately add the E weight because we want to maybe have multiple spark blasts um, offset from each other, and you definitely want to uh, to do this. I'm gonna grab this this particle out here, and I'm gonna put it in here. Now let's just um, do the same procedure as previously, just let's generate a bunch of, uh, of those sparks. So we're gonna do a few, uh, definitely a uh, 4i loop, let's just do six. And let's generate six of those particles. And we're gonna do kind of like, because they're supposed to fly in different directions, so let us just randomize First, let's just randomize an angle. And because here's the thing, um, I don't want them to just randomly fly in all directions. I want to maybe them have to, like particle blast. Let me let me show you real quick. Oh, this is this is great. This is like my my high school. I, I get to draw explosion. There's an explosion, right? I don't want to just particles to fly just everywhere. That would just look random and also like they, it won't look as nice. It doesn't look like the explosion in the, um, that we had in the Donpachi. Instead, what I want to do is maybe like clumps of particles, you know, something like this, right? Where the particles are just like exploding in one direction. They're kind of like clumped together. So there's like, you know, you have like a range from which they emerge. I think that's better than just making them or just go in all directions. I think that's not, not that great. Even here we are, we are tweaking things. <laughs> um, so let's go local angle. That's going to be the angle. Um, at which those particles are concentrating, around which the particles are concentrating. And then, um, yeah. And, uh, and then we have a look, uh, ang2, that's ag the actual angle of the particle is gonna be something like ang uh, plus R&D 0.3, I'm thinking. I don't know. Let's, let's think about this, 0.25, would be a quarter circle. So maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.15, let's try that. Um, we're basically taking an angle that we chose, this is here, and we're adding a little a random number to this to add some variation to the display sparks. Um, and then we're taking this angle two, and we're gonna calculate, we're gonna calculate this um, X and Y speed. sine and cosine, we already did that before, and we'll multiply it, and we're gonna multiply it by three because that seems like a nice speed, but we're gonna tweak the speed in a second. I just wanna just have something. Um, yeah, let's try that. Oh yeah, also a very important, <laughs> weight equals E weight. Right, right, good. Spark blast, let's add the spark blasts. Let's take a spark blast and let's make it um, again e x e y and let's add it. Um, let's add it at. Uh, let's wait for two frames. So it, it, the spark blast obviously doesn't happen when uh, the flash is happening. After the flash, we want to see the spark blast. It looks a little bit as if the explosion shoots out. Uh, a little bit. I, I don't. I, I, I'm maybe maybe we want to increase the range a little bit. Let's 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 go with three. 
Oh, that's better. Maybe that's this 0.5. Okay. Yeah, that's that, that's that looks less like shooting, more like like explosion. Okay, that's good. Right, let's just uh, tweak the speed. And this is actually also where I wanted to do maybe a little helper. Here's the thing. <clears throat> it's always, whenever we add a variation, and this is something also that comes up later in this episode, um, whenever we do a, like a variation, we add some random numbers to stuff, it's always a bit awkward to work with the R&D because the R&D always starts at zero and goes to that number, you know? Um, we sometimes want to say like, oh, give me a number between this and this, you know? And th again, that always involves a bit of math. And that math over the time maybe adds up. So let's create a function uh, called R&D range, R&D range. Let's just call it R&D range. And then from two. And that will just output, you know, a range between two numbers. Or maybe like a low to high. Maybe that's that's, clear, that's more clear, right? And then maybe like a third, which is called, called like FL for floor. Like if it's true, then we're gonna floor it. If it's not true, we're not gonna floor it. Um, and then we, the, we're gonna do something like um, local val equals, um, so it's gonna be R and D something plus low, right? So if low is say five, the minimal value is five, then it would be some kind of random number plus five always. So the question is like, just like what is gonna be the R&D number? If we, if we put in high, that's good, but it's, um, we, yeah, that, that we also have to subtract low from that, right? I think something like this. Now let us go through this with, with certain test values, just like to, to, to wrap your head around this. And then actually let's just always floor it for now. Let's just for, always floor it. So we return floor val. And we're doing it two steps. We could do it in one step, but it's it's fine. So let's just say low is two and high is four. Uh, what would that look like? So we would then have R and D uh, two minus four um, plus plus two. That would be R and D two plus two <clears throat> floor R and D plus two. So that would be two. Um, it would never actually reach four. I can already tell it will never actually reach four because R and D two is like zero point zero point something, one point something, but it's never two point something. So um, so yeah, I think we need to do something like high plus one minus low, and that would then mean that we're going to get two plus one minus four. So that would be. Um, I, I just realized I made a mistake. I, it, it was This was like four minus two, and that resulted in two. Yeah, yeah, okay, so now it's gonna be four plus one, so that would be five minus two is three, and that's exactly what we want, because then we're gonna get um, two, and the um, R&D is then zero point something, um, one point something, two point something, but never three point something, so that's what we want. Um, something like this okay so let us let us uh, let us put it um, let's make it really nice and compact and with this function this is like a little helper function that will allow us that will allow us to randomize a little bit better you know i don't like the floor maybe we can get rid of the floor but the problem is the floor will change up, I think, the math here, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm thinking correctly. Yeah, whatever. Um, let's do the R&D range now. Uh, so the reason why I want to do the R&D range is that for the speeds, I want to actually uh, apply the R&D range here. So we're going to do local SPD equals R&D range. And I had some test values that I would like to work well in the past, which is something between two and eight, right? And then we're gonna use this SPD, the speed value here, the speed variable to calculate our speeds, okay? Something like this. And then for the maximum age, again, we're gonna use the R&D range. Uh, and I had some good values in the past that I found out. Again, because this is kind of like one of those things where you experiment and, and, and find out you know, what the right values was. The values that worked well for me were six and 10. This was kind of like really good.
This is cool. There is some problems and I want to address them. <clears throat> First of all, the sparks kind of like just disappear and it would be nice if they kind of like slow down a little bit, if they kind of at some point would slow down. So I want to actually add something that is really necessary for a lot of particles, I think. Uh, I want to add something here. So here we're going to go if we're going to do a new property to the particle. Uh, this is the particle movement code. We're going to go if p uh, dot drag. Yeah, I want to add a drag to the particles. Um, so we're going to go p um, dot sx uh, multiply equals p point uh, p dot drag. <clears throat> so I want to multiply sx and sy with drag. Um, property only if the drag property was set and then we can use the drag property here for the sparks and give them a bit of a drag uh, drag uh, let's try different values it's just 0.5 this is a really extreme drag you can see they're not getting out at all let's just make a really slow drag this is good uh, maybe something like this Maybe then we need to increase the speed a little bit. Let's do it like a minimum speed. Let's increase this a little bit. See, the problem is we... Uh, 0 0.8 maybe. Yeah, it's a little bit better. The problem is we don't want the sparks to fly all, um, you know, uh, all around the screen. We want them to stop at some point, just disappear at some point. So it's kind of difficult. Let's see. Let's, let's just step... Yeah, I think what we're doing right now is the um, maximum age is kind of like stopping them. So let's just, just do like a really big maximum age. And let's, yeah, I think we need to increase the maximum age a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, 10 to 15, less variation. Yeah, that's good. And then we can increase maybe the drag a little bit. Now 0 0.8 looked better. Maybe lower down the by two frames. Yeah, that looks better. So now that we have these sparks, I actually want to spawn multiple sparks. So let us do a spark blast here and here. So let us do another one five frames later, something like seven. Mm, let's do one at five and then one at 10. Do I even see this? Oh yeah, they, they, they need to be a bit further. Uh, uh, uh. And then the first one is gonna be maybe a bit earlier. Yeah, yeah. See, we, I want to s feel like they have. It's a bit of a two-stage explosion thing. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm that's good. Eight. Okay. Um, now I want to f maybe talk a little bit about the colors of the spark. That's something that that is not good. Let's just do a p dot c. We're gonna take the color of the particle um, because we're actually already you know using this p dot c. So why don't we use it for the particle as well? Uh, for the sparks as well. Um, we're gonna set this color to... Now, the, the nice thing about using the C, we could technically animate the color of the, sp of the, <coughs> of the spark, but uh, I'm not... I'm not uh, uh, let's set it to... to yellow, 10. Oops. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, it, it, ha it adds a lot of oomph. It adds a lot of chaos. To the proceedings. Now something we can also do is I think the sparks are a little bit short and I want to add them, um, increase the, the length a little bit and we can do this, we can just multiply the SY here in the particle when we draw the line where you can multiply it by two. Now they're a bit bigger, more violent of an explosion and I there's, there's a bit of a problem where <clears throat> those are fairly thin they are fairly thin. I don't like the, how the thin they are. And there's a simple way of doing of, of adding some thickness to them. It's just add, you know, just drawing 
a second particle, a second line next to it. Now they are more chunky. We could with the second line, we could even give it a different color maybe. Let's just um, add a white color to them. Now there's a bit of a problem that um, where we are drawing the particles offset, uh, the two lines offset in the x direction. So they're thick if they're vertical, but they're thin if they're horizontal. So you kind of see that a little bit with the, with the, with the lines here, but it's fine. Yeah, like the particles add a lot of flash, a lot of a lot of dynamic, dynamic feel. I like that. Something that we can do now is we can test, you know, how much our explosion are are tasking our, our system, and we can see uh, if we can if we just keep exploding if if you know bad things happen. So you see, it's actually pretty efficient. Like if it, I just mash the button like crazy, I get to 0.3 of the CPU, and but you know we are just filling the screen with explosion at this point. It's like 160 particles happening, and it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. 30% of the CPU is, is is a huge chunk. Don't get me wrong, but you know if that you know you have this many explosions on the screen, you you know you're. It feels like we can do a lot of explosions. There's a lot of particles involved, but they disappear fairly quickly, and we don't draw all those particles at the same time on the screen. So at any given time, you know, there's like maybe one or two grapes visible of the from the explosion, and maybe some sparks. So it's it's fine. It's fine. Wow, the single line is 25 tokens. I wonder if we can do if it's worth doing like a four. I equals zero comma. So let's let's see how many how many how many tokens. So it's forty seven tokens in total. For i equals zero to one do, and and then just draw the line in here. How many tokens is that? That's actually a lot of less tokens. We can actually save some tokens here. So uh, we, we're going to do i here instead of the plus one. We're going to do plus i. And that will actually be nice. Now the problem is here that they both are going to be the same color. Uh, now they're actually always white. But maybe that's okay. Uh, you know what? If we're going to do it like this, then... We can maybe even change the colors as we already said. So C tab equals, we're gonna start with a white seven and go to the, to the 10 and then maybe to the uh, nine. Let's see how that works. Just to see. Mm, I don't like the dark particles, but this is nice. Now, as I said, I also wanted to add some variation to the explosion, just as kind of like a finishing touch, because I think we're we're getting we're getting we're getting some really good results here. Right. So I have a recipe I have been experimenting with, and hopefully you've been also experimenting in Doggy Zone, kind of like adding some variation to the to the grapes. Um, here is my here is here are my things that I came up with ideas of what to do uh, to make the grapes, because they always look the same. Each each grape like. Each explosion is identical in each grape within each explosion is identical. So we want to add some, some life to those explosions. Um, something I want to do here is I want to hear the distance, for example. The distance right now is always the same. I want to maybe have a different distance. And I had like a little formula here that I've written down. Um, now I was thinking using the our new function, but the, the new function is, is integer only and I would maybe now let's just try try this 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 thing that I, I came up with, something like this. Which is basically this, <laughs> if I think about it rationally. <clears throat> yeah, so we're gonna take seven and we're gonna add a number between zero and three to that for the distance. <clears throat> So that's good. Um, then let's continue on uh, with the um, with the um, 
size of the particles. I want to change the size. Of, and we can, by the way, we can just experiment with this now. Let's let's add like a lot. You know, if you add a lot, then they kind of like you don't really feel like they are four is also too much. But three, I think, is okay. They still feel like grapes when you when they are three. I think that's good. And then um, the radius, the target radius for the blobs. I also wanted like um, they are always the same size now, but I want to maybe change it up a little bit. So again, I have something here. I have yeah. Well, actually, we can use our R and D range function for this. So we can use our R and D range. I want to start with four, but I want to be able to go up to seven. Right. So let's try that. Ooh, yeah, you see the explosions are very different now. Very different. They look like really funky. And again, we can experiment now, right? We can just go like, what if we go all the way down to, to 10? What? Okay, this is a little bit too big of explosion. This looks like it's a big enemy that just exploded. So, but it's good to know that we can go up to six, uh, out, up to seven. I think six might might be nice. Uh, let's, let's go with seven. Seven was my original idea. And, and again, the, the, in the, we can go lower. Some of the blobs could be even smaller. Ooh, we're getting like a lot of interesting. But now, like some of the blobs are just too small. I think four seven was kind of like nice. The, the blobs like really breaks up the shape of the grape uh, and creates like those very interesting, very interesting, you know, weird blob combinations. It really feels like more organic and less like this rigid, rigid system that we had before. Another thing I also thought about adding, uh, which might be, might be cool, might be cool. Let's, let's try that. I want to add uh, right now all of the entire blob, the entire grape is uh, animating, animating in sync. The color is animating in sync. And that makes it feel, you know, like it, it kind of like makes it difficult for our eye to feel like um, this is kind of like, you know, um, a bundle of independent particles. They, they, you always associate, you know, a grape, um, the particles of a grape with each other because they all animate in sync. It, it kind of like this. They're all in lockstep with each other when they animate the color. And it would be nice to break up that lockstep a little bit. So the color they change change the color um, with a slight variation. So you know, when a, for example, when a, when there's a grape and it kind of like turns into a darker color, I don't want the entire grape to turn into the darker coral at once. Maybe one um, blob will turn one frame earlier, maybe then maybe two blobs, and then maybe then maybe there's one remaining blob that will stay for another frame. Like I want it to be feel like more organic, because again, with an explosion, you don't have like these strict layers you have like this very organic movement. I want to bring it out a little bit. So I have this idea for another parameter. Yes, another parameter. Um, color tab V, color tab variation, table variation. And we're going to do R&D 5. We're just going to drop R&D 5 in there. Uh, here as well. No, actually here not. Not in the center particle, just in the, in the outer particles. And what are we doing with that? Well, here, when we're doing the particle, here, um, when with h is zero, we're gonna say like something like p dot c tab v uh, equals p dot c tab, c tab v or uh, zero. And again, we kind of like set, if this is not set, we're gonna set it to zero. Um, just so we have something here. Um, and then the idea is with the CTAP V is we're going to add this to our H when we calculate the H of the particle. We're going to add it to a It's kind of like an offset. It's, it's an offset. It makes the particle a bit older um, when it comes to an animation of the, of the, of the color. And because of our mid function here that we had, that we smartly set up here, it doesn't matter if the particle get, is now then older than its maximum age, it's fine. It will still, it will still look okay. And now this is very subtle, so let's just, uh, observe frame by frame. You can see how see see how the individual frame individual particles from that blob are kind of like getting older earlier. 
and then the rest of the blob gets all. See how this is more organic now? And now when it turns into smoke, it doesn't turn into smoke all at once, but kind of like with the offset value. And again, we can experiment. We can see what wrong feels like. <laughs> I want to see what wrong feels like. I want to see what wrong feels like. I want you to show me. Okay, so now it's just basically just chaos. <laughs> it's just some random particles turning into random colors. <laughs> Ten is actually not even that bad, I would say. Um, but I, I still prefer the number that I arrived with five. If it's lower, then it's it's basically the same that we had before. So I think what about three or something? Uh, it still feels too much in sync, and five brings brings back like, the organicness of it. So now it feels like the particles are kind of like detonating with each other. Everything seems melded together. It doesn't really feel as individual grapes anymore. It's just a bunch of particles spawning now, which is what we wanted. This looks like an awesome explosion. Yes, 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 yes. Let's go to the doggy zone. That is right, the doggy zone. So if you look at our um, at our to-do list, this is done. We made a juicy procedural explosion. It cost us a lot. We have like the system set up with particles now, which we can use for other things. We're gonna look at how, what we can use it for. Something we haven't done yet is uh, making big explosions, but we already saw that it's kind of easy for us to use that system and make bigger, bigger explosions out of it, just make bigger blobs and so forth. It's gonna be fine. We have the tools that we need to make bigger explosions. I'm not gonna worry about the big explosion right now. I'm confident we can pull them off. So this is done. The final prototype. This is the final prototype that, that we have in front of us, but it is a, a, a tough one. Building the level is the prototype. So we're gonna go back to the scrolling prototype and we got, the task here is gonna, we are gonna have to make the level because we have to figure out the tile set. Uh, with level, I don't mean the enemies and so forth. I just, I just mean the background. We're gonna start working on the background of the level. And there is secret tech one. And there is secret tech two. I, I don't even know what secret tech two is. <laughs> But some of the doggy zone stuff will be related to that. So first task for the doggy zone, if you want to stay with an explosion land for now, if you want to have more fun with explosions, go ahead. I want to actually see your explosions. Please post your explosions as you came up with. Maybe you, you create your own variation on explosions. I want to see them in my Discord. Uh, please join the Discord and, and post your explosion, gifts of your explosion, or on social media somewhere. I want to see those explosion because I think this is this is this is where it's at. We could add. Um, you can also come up with your own particles that you can add. Maybe shockwaves, for example, something that we had in in uh, the basic tutorial, but that kind of worked well, and we might actually bring back at some point. I don't know. Uh, the breeze is something that I was also considering, but the breeze is you know sprites, so I don't want to bring sprites. I want to see your explosions. And if you want to experiment more explosions, one good task is to make a um, big explosion. Because right now this is kind of like, it's, 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 it's a big explosion, don't get me wrong, but it's an explosion that's supposed to be for a uh, 16 times 16 uh, enemy, that's a popcorn enemy in our game. What if our enemy is, you know, 32 pixels wide? What if it's 64 pixels? No, 64 is a bit big, but you know, what if a chunky enemy? How would that enemy explode? What is a boss enemy? You know, what would a boss enemy explosion look like? I, that would be a good thing to experiment for the doggy zone. But if you want to leave the explosions behind, if you want to move ahead to where we're heading right now, that would be the, we want to go back to the scrolling prototype. And I want to combine the scrolling prototype with the ship movement prototype. So this would be the next task for the doggy zone, combine the scrolling prototype and a ship movement prototype so we can have a ship flying above a scrolling background. And the third task, and that would be probably the most difficult one, and it's kind of like a teaser of what's coming up. I want to add this phenomenon that you maybe saw in a lot of games. I want you to look at something like Raiden. In Raiden, when you move the ship to the left, the background scrolls underneath. So you kind of like uh, see more of the level. So this, the background scrolls underneath as you move the shift left and right. So the levels actually widen in the screen. And you know, when you move left, you the, the, the level scrolls to the side. So you can see part of the screen that you didn't saw before. Horizontal scrolling is what I want to add that is dependent on the position of the, of the, 
of the ship. That's something we're going to work on in the next episode. And if you want to, you can go ahead and try to make it work already. Yes, yes, yes. But for now, I'm going to say a big thank you to all the people who are supporting this show on coffee. Because yes, there's a lot of people supporting this show on coffee. And they're wonderful people. And they're making this show possible. Um, I also wanted to read out a a comment that I saw on episode 4, which is really great, from Skater D. And they say, it really makes me... This uh, episode four was about scrolling. It really makes me all, all the more impressed that Carol Shaw was able to create what felt like a huge unending world with only 4K of code by using procedural generation in a river raid on the Atari 2600. I'd really like to see a video on how that would work and be great in a way that I could understand. I don't know if I can make like procedural, because I'm assuming it was procedural in River Raid. I don't know if I can make it work, but we're definitely gonna make, um, like this shmup totally is River Raid inspired. River Raid was one of the first games. I bought it at Atari, like my dad bought me an Atari. Not a 2600, but a 130 XE. And that was literally, I think, the first game we tried. I never saw a game like this before. It's great. It's a little ship flying uh, along um, a river. Not really a shmup, but definitely shmup adjacent. Very, you know, a proto shmup, I would say. Absolutely amazing game and definitely one of the big inspirations, inspirations for this project. We're going in this direction for sure. So yes, if you want to also support this show on coffee, uh, the link to that is coffee.com slash lazydevs. One of the big perks is that you get to see new episodes earlier. Next episode, we're gonna, it's gonna be all about scrolling, vertical scrolling, sideways scrolling, and we're gonna think about the levels and the tile set. Big, big topic. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.